Hello. Yes. Hello. 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 It is your girl, Miss Lee. Can you hear me, Ryan? Yes, I hear you loud and clear. Okay, good. I'm mean, looking like that for a moment there. I could not hear you at all. I was saying your name, but you I know I lost you. I was like, where'd Miss Lee go? <laughs> it is your girl, Miss Lee, full-time real estate entrepreneur based out of the Atlanta, Georgia area. This is the Keys to Success show where we interview local business professionals and entrepreneurs to talk about some of their keys to success in their business and in their life. Today, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome Mr. Ryan Owens. Uh, you, you are an extraordinaire. I see you on social media all the time. Super excited. If you would take a moment and introduce yourself to our viewers. Hello, I'm Ryan Owens, and I am a uh, entrepreneur and entrepreneur here in the Tampa Bay area. I work as the, uh, my title is the president of marketing and media for Milestone Title Services. So I'm proudly uh, bringing value to the lending and uh, uh, real estate world. And I'm a father of two and just excited to talk about success today. Yes, 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 absolutely. Well, thank you so very much. And I, I know we have so much to talk about. We do. I, I mentioned earlier, your, your book collection behind you is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, there's yeah. some good ones up there. Amazing. But before <laughs> we get into that, tell us a little bit about who Ryan Owens is. How did you get into the business? Tell us a little bit about your backstory. Okay, so I come from uh, Ohio, uh, right where the Wright brothers created Flight in Dayton, Ohio, and I was there for 30 years of my life. I uh, I got involved with sales from a very young age, starting my own business when I was around, oh, I don't know, 13, 14, called Grasshoppers. I went around and uh, I, I had a lawn mowing service, created my own cards, marketed, all that good stuff. Wow. It was more door-to-door -door marketing back then, uh, but then I just, I just was... Um, I wasn't too much of a student. I didn't really like school. My dad sent me to school and he specifically told me this. I want you to go to school to learn how to interact and communicate with your peers, solve problems, uh, get, you know, gain a circle, gain influence. It wasn't really about history and math and, and stuff like that. Although I love history. I love science. I hate math. It's so important. I'd I wish I was a numbers guy, but I'm not, I like creating numbers, but I don't like adding them up, subtracting <laughs> them, dividing them in any way. Uh, so needless to say, you know, I grew up in a religion uh, they're called the Jehovah's Witnesses. I'll bring that in because it's integral to my story. We went door to door and we sold uh, faith. We sold we sold uh, spirituality door to door. That's a hard sale. And I did that at a young age, knocking door to door. I was pretty much bred for the sales life. Uh, I got into about 2010 as I went through the bloom of my youth and I tried different things. I got into car sales uh, and, and right there is where I ran into uh, Grant Cardone about 2010. And why that was important, Grant Cardone was kind of a car sales guys only at the time. And I learned about uh, objection handling and, and, and selling and really providing value and uh, uh, marketing and all that. Because I had this sales manager who was always on TV and he was saying his catchphrase, get in here. And he was just so locally famous. And I saw the power of media and everything. So I'm starting to click on my sales career. Like it's not just about the consumer. It's about marketing and getting yourself out there. So that was really sales 101. I went ahead and left the car business after a while, after having success with that, being a part of commercials, you know, learning the game. I went into insurance sales, door to door, supplemental health insurance sales in the largest Amish settlement outside of Europe. So I was in Amish country and I was door to door grinding Monday through Friday, 10 o'clock sales meetings. I mean, it was road warrior. Um, what happened was I was still younger. I wasn't feeling fulfilled. I was kind of going through a period like we all do. Like, who am I? What am I? What am I doing here? Am I in the right environment? You know, do I like sales anymore? This is a grind. Uh, at that point, I decided to follow Jim Rohn's advice because I had gotten into that self-development and it was get outside of your comfort zone. That's where all the success lies. So I was doing okay in sales. I had like that rookie career uh, record breaking. I got the ring here from General Motors. You know, I did great, but I just, I knew I wasn't in the right place. So I left for Florida, uh, packed up four bags, sold everything that I owned on knowing that I needed to get as far away from my environment, far away from what I've all, always known to be able to create the life that I wanted to live. And we'll talk about that here because I'm the type of person who realizes that I create my life. Life doesn't happen to me. And uh, so I came to Florida. Um, I actually was here 
uh, because I had sent a video into Grant Cardone to be a part of his season two of his reality style interview show, whatever it takes season two, I actually diverted to Tampa. It was kind of a calling. I knew I needed to be there and I've started a life here. I've been in the mortgage business for four years and over the last year and a half, I jumped into title, which is the great fit for my spirit and, and how I, uh, you know, show up in the world. And that's where I'm at now, president of marketing and media. And by the way, to inject into that story, when it goes back to school, I do have a GED. I have no formal training. I have um, I have been self-taught in everything and reading great books like I have behind me and having mentors all over the world um, and self-educating. So there's a, a little wrap up of my story here. And now we are here today. And I'd love to tell you what happened over the last five years when I arrived in Florida. Yeah, absolutely. And that's exactly where I was going to start off. So you, you, you leave your hometown and you go to Florida and your, your initial goal is to be on whatever it takes. Did you actually make it on whatever it takes? And how did you wind up in Tampa? No, what happened was uh, I was very compelled uh, to come down to Miami and give a shot at getting in front of this charismatic salesperson named Grant Cardone, who had uh, instilled so much you know, sales skills into me. I wanted to kind of flex on him. I wanted to say, this is the beast you created up in Ohio. And, uh, and I really wanted to show up. But what happened was I had a friend, a lifelong friend, uh, who invited me to their home in Tampa. And I, I came to Tampa and I checked it out. And something about Tampa felt as if I had a coming to Jesus moment. I was like, something, I felt intuition. I was listening to myself. To even get to Florida, I, I started meditating and whatnot. I started getting into that inner self, inner wisdom, instead of what everyone else was saying. Something inside of me told me I needed to stay in Tampa and to create a life on my own right here. So I stuck with that and I had the opportunity to stay with my friends and uh, doors opened where there were only walls. When I had committed to staying in Tampa, things started uh happening. So it just, it just felt like the right thing to do was to stay in Tampa and, and build a family, which I've done. Wow. That is amazing. And every time I go to Florida, I have that same feeling. I'll go to Miami and I'm like, okay, I'm not going back to Atlanta. This is home. I'm going to stay for the kids. This is where we're going to go. I tell my, Miami's you know, great. Uh, yeah, something about Florida is just absolutely phenomenal. So you move to Tampa and, you, and you're like, okay, this is where I'm going to start my life. And how did you transition into insurance and into uh, real estate and all of that? Okay, so I came down here and you know what? Uh, I packed up about four bags. I maybe had $1,500 max to my name that I brought down with me. Yeah. So I, I'm borrowing a truck. I had sold my used Mercedes up, up north because I got outside the sales again. I wanted to live a life that was away from sales for a little period of time. We all have that. We needed that break. I helped a friend uh, be able to start one of the first breweries in 52 years in Dayton, Ohio. And it was a lot of fun late nights, but it was fun. You know, I got to serve uh, Dave Chappelle quite a bit. He's a local resident. Um, so it was just, it was just a fun time, but that was one of the catalysts to getting down here as I was done having fun. It was time to create. Yeah. So when I got down here, like I said, I had minimal amount in my pocket. Um, and I was going to start a BDC, uh, an internet department for a car dealership. Cause I had that car dealership background. Yeah. I didn't realize in Florida, 25 miles could be like three hours of driving a day, as opposed to Ohio, that's about 25 minutes. <laughs> so because of traffic, I was like, you know what? I'm looking for alternatives to this because I don't want to drive three hours a day in this. So someone called me again, doors where there were once walls. And it was a friend from high school. And he said, if you want to be successful, I know you're a go-getter. I know that you've you've got skills. If you want to be successful, call this guy in the mortgage business named Ryan. I'm Ryan. His name's Ryan. Like that's a match made in heaven. Yeah. So my mother had been in the mortgage business for about 18 years. So I was familiar with it, but, um, I took my chance at getting into something, uh, that was outside of my comfort zone again and give an attempt at, at sales and marketing in the mortgage industry. Um, so he hired me on the spot. I actually worked at a smoky bar called raccoons bar and grill to get my money for my mortgage licensing. Yeah. Uh, and I made it happen and I created some phenomenal relationships. Um, and what would you say is the biggest lesson that you learned being in the mortgage industry? The biggest lesson being in the mortgage industry um, was that relationships matter in business. Uh, transaction, being transactional and uh, focused in on the money and not focused in on the people or the processes that people are going through. Uh, people matter. 
and that connections and relationships continue a business and make a business thrive. And without relationships, and if you're only thinking about transactions, um, you won't have as many transactions. It's right. all about real people and real relationships. That's what I learned. Right. Wow. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. In the mortgage industry, and I know you said you wanted to speak a little bit about the inner works of what it took. To oh, yes. Each step. Talk a little bit about the inner works of what it took to get through everything that you were transitioning through. I really, it's just a, this, this is really a, a big thing to talk about because, you know, I was naturally because of my upbringing and because of, uh, you know, my, my being in the sales industry, I knew, I knew how to create sales. I could accidentally make money. I could, I could show up and, and I could create, but what I found was there was a piece that was missing. And it was the the outward sales skills and the objection handling and the, uh, the, 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 the purposeful scheduling and all that stuff's important. But what I found out that really 10x to my life mm -hmm. was 10xing my inner game, my inner self, more connecting with my identity rather than my activity. What I found was that as I was seeking to better myself, everything around me got better. My income got better by focusing less on outward and things I can't control and things that are just more um, 3D. They're, the inner game and the mindset of money. I realized that I had been told early on, I had saw my parents uh, use money. And I had saw those, I had heard and been told, you know, a penny saves is a penny earned. Or, you know, I'd even got wrongfully told that, you know, rich people were bad and that people that had money were not, not usually getting it from some, you know, bad means they were, they were, they were, they were hurt. They're not necessarily hurting somebody, but they were taking from somebody to get, right? It just had this negative connotation. What I realized that no matter how much my sales skills were, no matter how good my objections were, if my financial thermostat was set at, okay, just below broke or just over broke, which is J-O-B, job, Right. If if my financial is set and then, then, then a penny saves a penny earned and and money's for bad people is the root of all evil. If I didn't work on that internally, I would never go past six figures. I would always, even if I made a million dollars, I would come back to whatever my financial thermostat was set at because it's an inner game that I had to master to truly have success come less with with less effort, more abundantly. Uh, and it was all working the inner self and the mindset about around money and about how I approach the world. You know, rich people say, like I said earlier, when me and you were talking, I create my life. And there was a time when I was more poor, when I thought, you know, life was just happening to me. I was just kind of, it was just happening to me. But now I know through the inner work that I create my life. Right. And now I started designing it and paying attention to the inner and the outward the outer just grew and blossomed. That's phenomenal. So what made you, was this something that was always always instilled in you or what gave you that aha moment that, hey, my inner creates my outer and all of that? Where did you get that wisdom? Um, you know what? It, it comes from a lot of my uh, my faraway mentors, my people like you know, T. Harv Eker, it, it was, it was about, you know, I didn't like going to school when they had a book for me at school. I didn't like it. But as I started diving into books that were coming to me, coming into my awareness, books that like this uncovered things that I didn't know. Cause I don't know what I don't know. Right. And I, I didn't realize that I had a financial thermostat set by my upbringing. I didn't think that my 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 thoughts and beliefs about money were affecting me. I thought I could hustle hard and it would just happen or that uh, I would just get lucky and I'd find the right person. All of a sudden they'd lead me to success or I'd find the right team or whatever it might be. Right. And I, I pointed the fingers a lot because I didn't want to look at myself. I, I could blame. I did the blame game. And then if I couldn't blame anybody, I'd do the justification uh, thing. But then I realized I had to work on the inner game. And this book's really great. T. Harv Eker, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, Mastering the Inner Game or Inner Game of Wealth. Yes. So it was really through books and reading. That's amazing. That's amazing stuff. And I, I mean, with T. Harv Eker, I know Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, he also has a program on YouTube where he goes over yes. strategies of what it takes to break out of that mindset of, of lack and, and, and not having enough and being able to create and, and up your money blueprint. And I know, like you yes. said, books started coming to you. I remember one time I was out 
And I think it was at a restaurant and the Thinking Girl Rich was on the on the counter, just like right there, just sitting. And I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> a major part in my life as well, as far as reading Thinking Girl Rich and any any teachings by Napoleon Hill as well. So that's yeah. really awesome that, you know, books is something. Is there Are there any other books that you really stand out in your life? I, I, yeah, I got I got a, I pulled a couple off the shelf back here. There's a bunch back here that I'd love to recommend. But um, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, I think that that's important because it uncovers what's going on on the subconscious level that might be preventing us. We might be hustling our tails off and maybe not finding those results because there, there might be something that you're not paying attention to on the inner side. This will help you bring that to the surface. So this is a great book and I think really important. Um, this is a great book for, for those entrepreneurs out there and salespeople, Ninja Selling. This was uh, gave to me by an awesome, awesome uh, real estate agent who does big numbers. She's phenomenal, runs a great team. This, is, uh, this talks about the little subtle skills that have a big result in your business and in life. So that's a really great one. Um, I just got this one in the mail, The Power of Who. And this book goes over the fact that you already know everyone you need to know and how to, how to uh, uh, increase your abundance through the relationships that you already have. Wow, that's awesome. Um, another one, uh, this is a classic. I got two more. This is a classic, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Miss Lee, I know you're familiar with this book. Yes, yes. Um, this goes back to one of the best things I learned out of this is to master controlling the things that I can control and not worry about who's in office, but worry about that I can run for office. Not worry about the weather, but realize I have an umbrella. All Just paying attention to what I can control. And the last but not least is more of a spiritual book, but this is The Power of Now. And this is by Eckhart Tolle. He's kind of a weird guy. I stayed away here from a while. If you ever watch any of his videos, he's, he's kind of a, you know, a different kind of guy. He's very slow, methodical. I was a little turned off by him at first, but as I started reading his books and getting less judgmental, I found that uh, getting centered and being in the now is the place where all the possibilities are. Wow. It's, 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 it's where everything's available. You know, the past is nothing but our imagination. So let me say something about that real quick. Did you guys know science shows us that the things that we, half of our memories are not what we thought that they were. Yeah. Science has proved that 50%, up to 50% of the memories that we have, which is our, you know, just little neurons firing, half of that is not the way you thought it was. And the other thing is the future is nothing but imagination. Everything happens now. And this book talks a little bit more about that. Wow. So those are my suggestions. Wow, that's awesome. So I know when you were going over your books, you actually mentioned getting centered. Tell us a little bit about that because I know that you're into yoga. Tell us a little bit about how yoga has played a part in your life. I, I got to tell you that there has not been a greater tool that I've implemented into my life uh, than, yes, yoga, but meditation. And I think yoga and meditation go hand in hand with each other. They kind of are very much uh, brothers and sisters that complement one another. But meditation and mindfulness, and this isn't, let me tell you real quick, because this is a common misconception. Mindfulness and meditation is not getting rid of thoughts. So if you've ever attempted meditation to get rid of your thoughts, you're go that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's never going to happen. But mindfulness and meditation and getting centered and being able to tap into that eternal now uh, has been the number one tool for my success of going from that guy with a GED with an idea to get outside of his comfort zone with $1,500 to being in this four bedroom house with my, my credit score at where it's at now with my savings in the bank and my business and abundance just continuing to go up. It's been attributed not 80% to meditation and getting centered. I'm a spiritual guy. I believe that when we meditate, we're actually able to hear from the higher powers. We can shh for a minute and take a pause. Here, I'm gonna use some props. We're gonna take a pause. <laughs> and so how yeah. have you incorporated meditation into your life? So meditation has been incorporated in my life. Number one, I meditated before I made the move to get down here and, and, and make one of the most major moves of my life and leave behind everything I've ever known. If it wasn't for meditation and being able to tap into uh, that presence that's all around us and be able to get centered and actually be uh, aware of that deep intuition, that higher self that talks to us all the time, that still small voice within. I'm too loud. I'm very, I'm very, I'm energetic. I, I'm all over the place. And it, without meditation, I can't hear uh, that great inner voice. 
So hearing that, my inner guide, my inner voice, whatever you want to refer to it as, um, it has allowed me to, number one, calm down and be able to have clarity to make great decisions. We all have so many decisions to make. And without meditation, I have a hard time uh, uh, making the right decision because sometimes I'm getting, I'm not realizing some of the uh, things that are pulling me this way to make this decision or do this quickly or do this out of pressure. But being centered allows me to have a form of clarity. Um, it keeps my, my, my blood pressure down when we're hard hustling in the sales industry. It allows me to, to, to not have those panic attacks or anxiety attacks some of us deal with. Yeah. Um, and it's just, it's just allowed me to understand more of who I am. And, and, and focusing on that, I've been able to uh, better love myself. And that's allowed me to give more love to my clients, give more love to my family, give more love to my fellow employees and my boss. And just love more people in general. And that alone creates abundance. That alone attracts good stuff to our life and, and money, which I believe is energy in motion. I believe money's energy. That's another way that I started receiving more of it is realize not just paper. Yeah. It, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an energetic presence and, and you can use it to fund the life that you want to live. But back to meditation, I get like a squirrel sometimes. I'm like, ooh. Okay. Um, meditation is just, uh, man. It's just been everything. It's been the foundation which I've 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 been able to create everything else. Yeah. Uh, that that centeredness, that that uh, that ability to have that clarity, that calm nature. It's powerful, and it's just been such. I could talk about it for days. Um, if any of you out there have not tried it, take a few minutes a day to just sit still. And, and that's my next question: How often do you meditate, and it, how long it, it, would it be that you? Meditate? I've struggled lately to be able to meditate because, and, 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 and it happens, it happens that you, um, you get so caught up in the motions that you don't sometimes don't take the time out. So lately it's been a little rough and I haven't been doing my practice and while we call it practicing meditation, because it is practice, right. you have to practice at it. And, uh, I like doing it in the morning. Here's something I'll tell you about meditation. Without getting too neurosciency and all that today, you have certain brainwave states. And during the day, you're typically in alpha brainwave states and beta, uh, higher and lower beta states. Right before you're going to bed and right when you're waking up, your body's transitioning and your mind waves are transitioning into theta waves back into that beta. At that theta, that's where that's where hypnosis works. That's where we can use affirmations and actually have them work in our life because we can program the mind um, at certain times. They have things that you strap on your head these days that shows you where your brainwave states are at because we know that in theta waves, we can actually program the mind. We can believe in a new thought. We can create a new paradigm by, by knowing that it's not just about you know affirmations at times when we're in high beta states, but if you know that right before bed, you can listen to uh, some great you know, YouTube affirmations are in the morning. Uh, there's certain times. So I like doing it in the morning. I like getting my day centered before the madness happens, before I even look at my phone, which is hard. I, I'm, I'm addicted to my phone. Yeah. It's a great tool. But if I can get my meditation done in the morning prior to looking at my phone or having all of the people that need me in my life yeah. need me yet, getting centered in the morning has been great. So five, 10 minutes is all it really takes. If you don't have time for 10 minutes, then you need a half hour right? Wow. because you, you need to do it. And I think that if you're able, I, I truly believe this and I'll put it out there and I haven't got there yet. So I'm saying this from a place of seeing others do it and, and striving for it myself. But if you could take a half hour out of your day to pause and do some mindful breathing or just to, to practice some mindfulness, um, it'll change your life in ways that you can't even imagine. Wow. That is awesome. So with meditation and, and just being centered and just ha creating peace in your life, I have another question. How important is incorporating that with your family? Because you, you just had a new baby girl and you have an amazing son as well. And yes. Baby, <laughs> how important is that to incorporate that with your family? You're such a great interviewer because this is such a powerful question that you just asked. What I what I come to find out in the first place I got wind of it was my guy Zig Ziglar. And uh, he made it very clear that success is really about having 
a, a, a level of success in all areas of your life. I truly believe that if you want to be a leader outside of the house, you must first start being a leader in the house. That's one of the things that changed. I thought that I could be a leader outside of the house and come home and be in shambles and have arguments all the time and, and not lead and co-create with my spouse and create, create a negative environment. I'll be honest with you. If you look at me online and it's true, I'm being authentic. I'm a positive light. But when you come into your home, there are real challenges that people don't get to see that you don't put on live. Yeah. Okay. And I had to, uh, through, through mindfulness and loving myself more, I was able to love my family more. I was able to pour from a cup that was full. You can't give from an empty cup. So mindfulness and meditation allowed me to be even more loving to my spouse or have that space of pause in between a, a usual trigger and then a usual fight, finding that space in between by, by being centered to be able to make a new decision. Like I'm not, I'm not joining in on this or I'm going to take a few minutes away. And there's a lot of different steps that we could talk about with that. But the, the, the leading at home is what has allowed me to have the confidence and uh, to be able to lead out at work and lead out in the field. I truly believe if you're having a trouble with leadership out there, you should check inside your home. And I think that creating a space of love and peace and abundance in your home is, is how we can have it filter out into our, our activity. I, I, I usually differentiate between like the real, real stuff of your identity, like who I am, why am I here? What is my purpose from our, my activity, which is my job to create that energy of money to fund my life. So when I talk about activity, I'm talking about jobs. When I'm talking about identity. I'm talking about who you really are. Right. Uh, one more thing I will say, I went from another mind shift change in the household that really helped. And I wanted people to know about this. I grew up in a, uh, uh, traditional Christian household that placed, um, me above women. It went Jesus, it went Jesus Christ. It went men, it went women. Uh, and that I'm not sure if we translated that right, because what I realized that works now in 2020, I'm glad that, you know, this worked for the Greeks and the Romans and everybody else. But for, for me, suburb Ryan here in 2020, co-creating with my spouse is where I'm at. Yeah. Me and my wife co-create in my home. I used to think I had to be the leader. I had to be the spiritual leader. I had to be the leader of this. Take a step back there, uh, Ryan. Yeah. It's now time to co-create with my spouse. And that has made a huge difference at home. That's powerful. And so when you say co-create, if you would go into it a little bit, what and what you mean with regards to co-create? Well, I mean, I mean that uh, I mean that I allow for her to have the the, the, the space and authority to be able to uh, lead and create in the household and the things that we do and the things that we partake in and the food that we eat just as much as I do. I'm not an ultimate authority in my home. I am a co-creator to to allow that authority space and that leadership space for both of us. It's not 51% me and 49% you. It's 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 half and half. And that divine feminine energy and that divine masculine energy works together to create a, a powerful energy in the house. And if you're just going to squelch the feminine in the home with your masculine, yeah. it doesn't work out well. And is it working out for you if you're leading with, and some of it does, right. with two people that are in that space of, of understanding the roles that they set up in their house. And it's no right or wrong. But right. for me, I had to take a step down off my throne and give her a, give her a crown too. And we rule this kingdom together and we co-create what goes on in this house, what we eat, where we go, all of it together as a unit. That's beautiful. And I know that's how Elaine and Greg Cardone do their, you know, have their union as well. And here on the Keys to Success show, initially we had the Power Couple edition where every Friday we would interview local power couples to discuss some of their keys to success with being a union. And that's that beautiful. Was things. Yeah. And that was a lot of the things that they said, hey, we're, we're a team at this. Yes. Together. So I definitely think that that is super important to kind of have that mindset when it comes to building the unity of the family. It's made all the difference in everything outside of the home by making sure what was inside of the home was uh, was was whole and peaceful. Wow. Now, we still we still have challenges. I don't want to put it out there. I got it all figured out because right. we still work on things because we're not we're not at the finish line. Right. You know, right. But just throughout the journey, you're working it through throughout the journey. Absolutely. Better and better and better and better. Right. Absolutely. Now, you had mentioned becoming better in all areas of life. You're a parent as well. And that. Mm -hmm. Sure, that goes with being a parent as well to the parents that are out and watching. 
you know, how important is it to set that example to your children to say, hey, you know, you know, hey, I'm working on myself and things like that. Well, at the age that they're at right now, my son has just become self-aware. Yeah. I mean, there's that there's that period of time right about four years old where you can see. Uh, I, I'll read a lot of books on neuroscience stuff and, and parenting stuff, but kids don't know that they're separate from you till a certain point. And then they realize about four years old, give or take, they realize that they can ask questions of something outside of themselves. So they start seeking answers because at first they realize they think everyone's the same. Everyone's just this one unit. And then they, they, they separate themselves at a certain point. So he's watching and asking questions. Really, my job is right now, I think it's more of my my uh, my the verbal things that I say and how I treat his mother. And, um, you know, uh, when he sees me working at home, it, am I having fun? Am I am I feeling like I'm am I showing him that I'm all stressed out, like work is related to stress yeah. and stuff like that. So um, it's it's tough. It's tough, especially in the new space of COVID. A lot of people have brought their offices home. There's a lot of co intermingling of, of spouses and children right now that weren't there. It's a lot to deal with. So if any of you are, are kind of losing it right now, get on that meditation. That's really going to help. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just being a great example. I think it's more about what I'm saying, what I'm showing. Am I having fun? Am I treating his mother? What kind of tone do we have? And uh, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. They're little sponges. Yeah, I, they, and they really are. They're little sponges. They absorb everything. So what we do around them matters. And that that is a good point. Um, well, I want to thank you again for being on the show today. And just going to you. to your success in your life. Um, before I let you go, I know that you had spoken again about the inner works and then you incorporated getting into title work. How did you transition into the title company? And tell us a little bit about what a marketing, you said, explain, mm -hmm. explain your role. <laughs> so in the mortgage space, I was really excelled at marketing and getting attention and getting, and getting business. Um, so what I wanted to do more of that because in, in our jobs, they, they, they try to, you had to manufacture the product, sell the product and do everything in the mortgage business. I, I love my loan officers, but what I did well, I needed to only do was the marketing piece. And so I couldn't, I couldn't find that because as I was building, anyway, we won't get into that story, but it was hard to find that amazing team that once I brought in the bacon, they were able to fry it and put it on that. They could do it all. They were great, but I couldn't find the team that really exemplified uh, or was on par with the type of marketing I was doing. Mm. So, you know, I was a bomb bomb top five mortgage video influencer in the country in 2018. I got a lot of social media awards and stuff, um, but that's what I excelled at. So one of the last big agents that I was, uh, uh, I almost said going after that sounds so creepy. I was going after, but I was like wanting to do business with her and partner up with her. Um, she was someone that I had expressed some of my I was losing my heart in the mortgage business. I wasn't having fun and I really wanted to double down on the marketing aspect. So um, she linked me up with uh, my now current owner of the title company and he needed someone, he has a great business. He needed someone that could come in and do a great job with marketing and bringing new ideas to the title world. And it just felt like the right marriage at the right time. And now I'm able to bring, I want to be an agent at heart. I want to be a real estate agent, an investor and all of that. But what I excel at is finding ways that people can get over themselves, be authentic, get on camera. And I have a lot of great marketing ideas. So I spend my time bringing value to loan officers and real estate agents now. And all I do is marketing. All I do is create relationships. So my heart is happy. My soul is refreshed because I made a position for myself that allowed me to solely focus in on my strengths. Uh, so that's been really huge before I had to have my strengths and then a lot of other stuff that got in my way and was above the neck and kind of brought me down. Right. So I had to adjust and I'm doing what I love to do now. That is absolutely powerful. And, and at least now you have all of those tools added to your tool belt with being into marketing and being the president of marketing and media. You know, you have the, you, you were a broker, you are an agent. So you know exactly how to, you know, have that conversation, you know, the language. Full circle. When you're committed to success, like I said, people will show up who normally wouldn't be there. There'll be doors that were be where once there were only walls. I mean, it's true. I committed to finding out how I could use what I love best and get paid for that. And so it's, it happened. Yeah. <laughs> 
stuff. Great stuff. Well, Ryan, I want to thank you for being on the show today. And I also thank want to you. thank you, viewers, Tia. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Yeah, Tia. And thank you so very much for tuning in today. Ryan, what is the best way for our viewers to get a hold of you? What's your contact information or social media? Well, one of my newly formed IG pages, we talked about this earlier. I've had to start some and stop some. I have a personal page where I do more of my, I do more of a spiritual mindset things and that's at RYA underscore Owens. But my business page on Instagram is at Remarketing Ryan. That's Real Energy Marketing Ryan. I'll tell you what real means. Uh, reliable, enthusiastic, authentic, loving energy. That's what I like to promote. So Remarketing Ryan, you can find the same on Facebook business page, Remarketing Ryan at Milestone Title. Awesome. Well, thank you so very much for taking time out of your afternoon. Congratulations. Thank you. Beautiful baby girl. You and are the best. You, thank you again. And thank you to our viewers. You have an absolutely amazing afternoon. And to our You too. Thank you. And to our viewers, remember to tune in every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 noon where we discuss some of the keys to success with business entrepreneurs. Until next time, you guys have an absolutely amazing afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. God Robert. bless. Thank you so much, Miss Lee. Thank you very much. <laughs>